I got on the best dress list. So and thank you, you did. for that. I did. And did. I did. And she gave me my three peeps. A three peep. Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to Come Back with Erica Cobb, a community of folks like yourselves who are getting ready and staying ready for their next chapter. Now, for those of you who have been following really for a while or just at any point, you know that my fashion game has been stepped up astronomically. <laughs> I'm kidding, but I'm not. So um, during NAACP, I had the amazing opportunity to work with a very talented, stylish, prolific designer who I had actually connected with years before. And when I say it may not come when you want it, but he'll be there right on time. Yes, that is exactly what happened with my connection with Sir Algernon. Algernon Johnson, welcome to Come Back with Erica Cobb. Thank you, I'm honored. This is, okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, wow. for starters, just in the interest of transparency, we are in Vegas right now. Vegas. Uh, yes, we are at BravoCon weekend yes. and we are together because Algernon has actually created the most sick look for me to wear on the red carpet. And the funny part about it is I'm not even the one walking the red carpet. <laughs> I'm doing my interviews, but I'm planning on stunting on everybody on the red carpet. Yeah. So Algernon, why yeah. don't you talk to my audience about how we first connected. Wow. So, um, I was born and raised in LA. So I think I tell people all the time being in LA, being a product of LA, everybody's talented. Everybody does something. Everybody, you know, everybody does something creative or in the yeah. arts. And so I had gotten into a rut where I felt like people needed to bring me my break, big break as opposed to working for it and grinding for it. Mm. And so it took some humility. <laughs> it took me kind of breaking myself down a little bit like, yo, go ahead and do it. So I was sent a message. I sent a DM. I stepped in our DMs. I know her <laughs> husband though, so it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> slid. Uh, I slid in our DM. <laughs> um, but I sent a message because I had, I had seen her work, I had seen her. Um, she had a very, very strong, she has a very strong social media presence. And I just gravitated. And it was one of those things that I was just like, well, let me just, let me just write her and see, you know, see what happens. And this was actually pre-pandemic. Yeah, like right in the, on the brink. Right, right. Yeah. on the brink of it. And so um, that kind of like slowed down everything. And then fast forward to last year, it just, it just happened. It just, yeah. it was just our time. It was time. Yeah. Um, so you hit me back and you were like, hey, I'm going to the, you know, I've been nominated, but it was very matter of fact, like I've been nominated, you know. Well, <laughs> yes, it, it was matter of fact, <laughs> but I said it matter of fact to you because when you initially reached out to me and you were so just, I mean, so generous with your words to me. Oh. And you said that, you know, I want to create something for you. Right. And the pandemic started pandemicking and there was really? a lot of loss for both of us. Right. And I remember you saying like, um, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm going through some things. And right, right, right. I said, I'm going through some things too. Right. And listen, we're not going anywhere. Right. So we both said, when it's time, it's we'll know happen. and we'll connect. Yep. And so when I got the NAACP Image Award nomination this year, I knew right away that like you were probably like the fifth call I made, like after I talked to my parents and like, oh, wow. and to like, you know, my inner circle, because I knew that this was the time. I didn't know that part. Yes. Yes. So that's why I was Bit. so matter of fact, like, hey, Bit. because the last time that we spoke, like when it's time, we'll know. Right. And I was like, and we did. Right. And then to further just talk about like the idea of synergy you had dressed Tabitha Brown, who we all know and love, right. and she got on the best dress list. And then Yvette Nicole Brown, who we all know and love, she got on the best dress list. Same. And it was time for a cob. It was time for a cob. Yeah. <laughs> it was just time for a cob. Yes. Brown, brown, cob. Yes. And for NAACP Image Awards. And I just thought, like, if this isn't a sign. Yeah, for sure. Then what is? For sure. 
And sure. so that's how we connected. And yeah. I am so, so honored and blessed. And the, the thing is, um, Erica reached out and she was like, well, I have a stylist, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'll connect you guys because I want you guys to just take the lead, blah, blah, blah. And she had never met me face to face. So it was so weird that she trusted me so much. Mm -hmm. I'm talking. Haley Lucchese. Haley. Yes. Haley is so, 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 so sweet. Yeah. Bloody Haley. Yeah. Um, but it was so weird because even when Haley and I had our first call, she was like, do what you want, do what you do. She was like, you're the creative. You have the mastermind. Let's do it. Let's do, do what whatever works for you. When we started talking about colors, she suggested one. I suggested one. She was like, oh, let's do it. She's never worn this color. Let's go for it. And um, I did a sketch. I'm not the best sketch artist, but You're I did a sketch. You're selling yourself short. And... I sent it and they both like, it was, yeah, it was yeah. one of those things. Like you're waiting on, it's almost like you, you made something at school yeah. and you bring it home <laughs> to your parents and you're like, and yeah. you're just waiting on their response and both of their responses just exceeded my expectations. So I just had to, I had to kill it. Well, I, I it. you know, first, like, I really, I talk to people about this because when they hear, like, stylists, makeup artists, uh, you know, videographer, like, all mm -hmm. of these things, because I'm a creator, right. I am a serious creator, right. and I believe that it is my responsibility to bring certain messages to my particular sure. part of the neighborhood and the culture. Sure. And so I always want to kind of give people like a little bit of an inside story as to why and how the, all these things came together. And one of the things that I always talk about when you're building a team is you have to have people who are very passionate about what they do. 100%. They have to love it more than you, they have to love it like it's their air to breathe. 100%. Because when they love something, then all you're doing as someone who's contracting or putting together a team is saying, hey, I trust you, please do what you do best right. and help me help you right. help me. Right. And so right. just with the conversation with Haley, um, that was important because I don't want to, I don't ever want to have anyone feel like someone is is jumping in and they're stepping on my yeah. toes. It's more like, how do we work together as a unit? And that makes sure. everyone better. 100%. So it really worked out so well. I got on the best dress list. So and thank you, you did. for that. I did. And did. I did. And she gave me my three Pete. A three Pete. Hello. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so that was just like a beautiful start to yeah, our story. For sure. But I sure. want to know about your story. How did you know that you were going to become a designer? It was weird because my dad, I grew up and my dad was a pastor. Um, and so my he was the sharpest guy mm. ever. Like his suit would be impe impeccably tailored. Um, his tie would match his pocket square. His pocket square would match his shoes. Mm -hmm. And he just had this whole thing going. And so I, I would watch him, even though he was my dad, I would watch him like, he really, really, he's really serious about this, whatever he's, however he's putting this together. And so I just started looking around the house and looking around and trying to create and trying to figure things out. And I would draw, um, and then I would take some of his dress shirts. I took a, I remember taking one of his dress shirts at least, and I cut it up and I took it apart. But I, it wasn't me destroying it. Mm -hmm. It was me <laughs> trying to figure out the process. Yeah. Trying to figure out how it was put together. And so um, I got my ass whooped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, because it was an expensive shirt. Yes. But, yes. you know, but he saw that I had something. He saw that I had something special there. Um, and then from there, it went from there. We had some old curtains in the, in the garage that my mom had she was done with i grabbed those and i used them as fabric to make a dress mm -hmm. um i knew nothing how about old a... were you at that point i was probably 10 11 oh my gosh wow maybe 12. Mm -hmm. um and so i made a whole dress i had no idea what a sewing machine was um so i used a needle and thread and made like a whole i mean it took me forever yeah but my mom then started to pay attention um 
because she she understood that there's something different about this. He's not just being destructive. Mm -hmm. He's not just cutting our stuff up. Um, and so she realized it and she started to hone in on it. I didn't know, this is the part of my story that I love the most, Erica. I didn't know that there was an industry out created for me. Mm. I didn't know. I didn't know that there was a fabric store. I didn't know yeah. when I get to this fabric store that the fabrics are on this side, the pins are on this side, and then you can get the thread to match the fabric on this side, and then you can get the zippers to put in the, mm -hmm. like I had no idea. Yeah. So when I first saw that, it was like me, I was like at Disneyland. It right. was one of those moments like, are you kidding? That's, I've been cutting up, that's why I got in trouble because they couldn't yeah. see where I'm here. Yeah. But, um, How old were you when you went to your first Disneyland fabric store? Um, I was probably, at this point, I was probably maybe 14. Okay, so a couple it's, years later. Like, yeah. So, I always find it funny, especially when you think about childhood memories of when you, because you're someone who has known what you were going to do and who you were going to be right. very early on, at right. least a component of it. Right. And we relate to each other on that because 100%. very early on, I knew I was going to be a radio girl. I was going to be a media. I was going to talk to people. I was right. going to tell stories. Right. But it's funny when I think about it now, because you just reminded me that in our minds at those ages, we think that we're creating this idea because we, we are creating everything else, 100%. right? So it's like, it's so crazy when you meet someone or you're in a situation like a fabric store and you're like, oh, this world exists. Like, it's like 100%. such a mind boggling thing. I didn't make this thing. up. Right, right. <laughs> like it's yeah. validation in a different Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, so it was one of those things that just, it let me know immediately that that spark would it meant something it wasn't just me just being yeah. a creative kid or me just doing something different because my cousins were all outside during mm -hmm. the summer they were all outside playing sports and you know doing other things and they were away at camps and that kind of a thing but i was in the house drawing or stitching or putting something together and here we are yeah. it's still the and the funny thing is i had this conversation with a friend not too long ago but I, I live in that moment. Mm -hmm. I live, I exist there at that 12 year old. Boy, I exist there. Yeah. So that's the reason why I'm, I'm um, I can't be big headed about it. I understand, I fully understand that my gift, my talent, my career, it's, um, it's not just about me, it's about yeah. Other people. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if I made clothes just for me. Yeah, I would probably be living in my car because I couldn't yeah. afford. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, no. So live anywhere. So I, I fully understand that it's about other people and that it's more than about clothes. Mm. It's more than about clothing. It's more than just about the pieces. When I zip you up in your dress for the first time, and when we did our fitting, it was. Those are the moments I live for. Yeah. Like I'm getting chills right now just thinking about, but those are the moments that I absolutely live for. And you, you can't deny that this is something that you, that that's, you were born to do. Yeah. It's when like you get an anointing. that feeling. It's yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. I love what you said about it being about, it's not just about the clothes. Right. Because I think fashion in general gets a bad rep by many people sure. because it's considered like, you know, maybe aesthetic or vanity or, you know, like all of these things that are very surface level. Sure. But a piece, like when you create, and I say a piece because I believe that's what you create. It's right. a work of art. Oh, and you. well, it is. And it, it comes down to looking at or feeling when you're wearing a piece like, the thought yeah. it's it's very important for people to feel like they're thought about 100 and so often a lot of people don't feel that feeling 100 and when you wear a piece it's of yours it's something where it's like he considered this about my body sure he considered this about spots that are places that I might not feel sure. as comfortable about. Sure. He considered this about places that I feel super comfortable. Sure. <laughs> 100%. Yes. And then the moment, um, you know, I one thing, uh, there were so many moments, but one moment that I really won't forget is when you were helping me get into the dress mm -hmm. and my mother 
was mm -hmm. in the room with us. Mm -hmm. And it was like, the only thing I can liken it to is like a wedding day because oh, wow. it was so special. Oh, wow. And how she looked at me and oh, looked wow. at you, oh, you wow. know, about, you know, it was a moment. And I think when we're talking about like fashion, but specifically when we're talking about designers mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. um, it's important that people understand that much like, you know, people get credit for the amplification of minority voices. Sure. They get credit for the amplification of certain causes. Sure. I credit you with the amplification of being intentional, wow. being thought about, wow. and and really being a, a person who has not only the responsibility, but also the privilege of wow. showing up in your fullest self. And wow. that's what you create. I think, I think, I think that comes from what well, I, I don't think, I know that that comes from um, being an insecure kid. I was, I was called the ugly skinny kid back in the day. And I remember being so insecure and uh, my, Acne, if you knew me back then, you probably wouldn't be my friend today. But my no, acne that's not was true. Terrible. That's not true. Hello, I was a part of the acne, yes. Oh, absolutely. so we bond on another, we yes. bond on another thing. Yes. You turned the Nestle Crunch bar over, that's Yeah. That yeah. was my skin, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um But I rem I, I I work from a place where I never want anybody to feel what I felt. Mm -hmm. I never want somebody to feel pushed to the side. Yeah. I want I never want anybody to feel like they're not heard or not seen. And that's where that comes from. I want to make sure that when I zip this dress up, that every insecurity that may be in somebody's on somebody's person, that it just falls away and that they see beauty, that they mm. only see beauty. They only feel beautiful and I'm getting emotional a little bit. Hold on. Well, it's emotional. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's an emotional thing because um, you just never want somebody to feel ostracized. Yeah. You never want somebody to feel like a part of that group yeah. over there. You want somebody to walk in the room and feel like they are a part of the room. Yeah. So that's my that's my motivation. I have to I have to make sure that the person that wears my pieces when they walk in, they feel seen. Yeah, well, you achieved that, absolutely. <laughs> You're listening to Come Back with Erica Cobb's conversation with Sir Algernon. I would say my designer, but I can't claim you. I'll take it, I'll take I'd it. Like, my designer. <laughs> um, I would love to claim you for myself, but the truth <laughs> is you have dressed so many amazing people that I look up to, oh, wow. that um, you know really embody um, great things and I think you're very, I think your clients, you and your clients choose each other. Sure. There is a definite um, through line sure. to most people that I see you work with. Sure. Who was, or what situation was your first like contracted client where you were like, oh my gosh, this is like for real, for real? Um, Niski Nash. Oh my gosh. How dare <laughs> you send an insecure guy a Hollywood starlet as his first real, like, Holly, like that was crazy to me. Um, oh. So I have a stylist friend that I grew up with. Um, she called me, she is notorious for calling for the, at the last minute. I won't call her name, <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, sis. Um, she called me two days before a shoot. She said, I have a shoot coming up and I really, really need this dress. She didn't mention the name. I need this dress. Um, she's going on a promo tour. She's got lots of stuff happening. You know, I would love to, you know, let me know what you can do. So she hits me back the next day and she's like, okay, it's Niecy Nash. And so I literally, honestly, in all transparency, I probably had maybe $200 in my bank account. Um, it was a lot going on at the time. I was still working, but I had lots of moving parts. I had lots of things going on. Um, but I took what I had and went down to the nearest fabric store, grabbed some fabric, went home, said a good prayer. Yeah, well, you have to. We got to get covered in the blood of Jesus, honey. Yes. <laughs> said a good prayer, pulled out my scissors, put on some music, grabbed some snacks. And three hours later, it was like, oh, Okay, I finished. I'm I'm done, and I took a picture, sent it to my friend, 
And she was like, oh my God, I love it. She sent me the money to ship it. The, the shoot was the next day. Oh my gosh. I was in Atlanta, she was in LA. Oh my gosh. She was like, we have to overnight this. She was like, please tell me that you have time to take this to overnight. I jumped in the car, went and overnight, packaged it up, overnighted it. She got it like early, early before the shoot even started. She put it, um, but she didn't respond to me. She didn't hit me up immediately. So I'm sitting there like, oh, maybe, did I, was this a mistake? <laughs> I wanted to eat a cheeseburger at least today, but yeah. I spent that on <laughs> no. fabric, you know. Oh my gosh. But um, she hit me up at the end of the day and it was p loads and loads of pictures. Oh my gosh. That's that's better than a text message. And yeah. I just, I could not believe my work was on I Hollywood stuff. Like this was crazy. And at the time, Nisi was on several shows. Mm -hmm. She still has several yes. jobs. Yeah. But she was on several shows back to back to back to back. And she had been nominated for so many awards and she had won so many awards at that time at that point. So imagine the twelve year old. Mm. Like, yo, I'm glad I cut those sheets up. I did get in trouble. Yeah. But I'm glad I did that. So I I worked from a place of, of that of that particular part of what I do. That's that's the that's where I work from. Yeah. I work from that spot, um, only because it just it keeps me grounded. It keeps me from smelling myself. It mm. keeps me from you know. And there's a level of there's a level of um, smelling ourselves that we have to have in this industry, yeah. so that we yeah. you know, so that we have uh, exude that exude that confidence and everything that other people need from us. But um, it keeps me understanding that there's another level. Mm -hmm. There's that's not it. There's yeah. something else that could that could happen. So that was my first. Yeah. She was my first. And then it just started to kind of snowball from there. And I just I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better career. Yeah. I really, really, really couldn't. I've had a website for maybe a month in my career and everything else is organic. Everything else word is of just mouth. so organic, word yeah. of mouth, social media. Well, your work it speaks for itself. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, that. no joke. Um, it, I find it to be so amazing when you said that earlier you were talking about your sketching and you're like, my sketching isn't that great. And But the way, what I'll say is, and I, I, I don't think that same thing. Okay. I think what you are really great at in terms of how I digest it mm. as the person who will be wearing it mm. is you... It's abstract. The concept is there, and you you can see what's most important in sure. the design. Like you, there is a way that you sketch that the it factor mm. is amplified. So like I hear that. in the situation I hear that. of the dress that you created for NAACP Image Awards for me. Um, the side bustle, like mm -hmm. it, it, it described what it was. Cause that was like, I mean, I was the least known person on that carpet when I was on that carpet. I walked behind Angela Bassett, okay? <laughs> I remember like, when you got back to the hotel oh and you told- Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, and it was like a no tea, no shade. Like that dress was the moment. Oh, like, wow. and that's how it was the dress. Wow. And the way I was feeling, like I felt like, well, yeah, I should be walking 100%. behind Angela Bassett. 100%. So what was the thought process? And when you come up with that special it factor, <laughs> what goes through your mind? Um, immediately, when I meet somebody for the first time, when I'm coming in contact with them, I immediately start to design something for them, mm. immediately. Um, and so the color, which was this beautiful magenta, yeah. kind of fuchsia, pink kind of color. Um, so I immediately saw that color. Um, I knew that I wanted to I wanted to show your shape. I wanted to show your body, but I also wanted that old Hollywood glam yeah. effect. And then I love drama. I love a little bit of drama. So mm. just the skirt just had to it yeah. just had to be larger than life you know so it was it was the process was simple i saw your smile i saw your your exuberance i saw the way you handle yourself on social media i saw you the way you handle yourself on tv and i knew it needed to be bold but still 
classic and effortless. And when you look back at these pictures years from now, or you show your daughter these pictures, mm. your future daughter, or she wants to wear it, whatever, she has a story behind it and you have a story to give her. Oh my so, God. So yeah, so that's really, really a big deal to me. Now that's you're a big deal. Make me cry. <laughs> Look, Lord. That really is a big deal. I, honest, I hadn't even considered that. Now I'm like, oh my God, that is like so beautiful. Oh. Like I hope I can do that one day. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Um, Sorry. No, 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 no. I, it's, it's so interesting. Like when you meet people yeah. and it's very like an instant understanding, 100%. like we have met before 100%. our families, like our mothers are definitely very 100%. similar. 100%. What effect has your mother had on your on your life? My mom was so fine. Is she still in? Yo, and still oh is. Oh my gosh! Yes. When, I mean, just her being a the first lady of a church. Mm. Um, she was never into the hats and all the drama. She was never into any of that. But I remember some of her dresses, just the perfectly cut. Uh. A line dress, just really, really simple. Maybe had a little bow at the top or something. Just, just the simplest things. But she was always very, very classic. Mm -hmm. Always very classic. She never, you know, showed too much. She would give a little, you know, just a little shoulder maybe yeah. every now and then to get the people talking. Yeah. <laughs> but she would always keep it very, very classic. Um, her hair sometimes was just pulled back in a simple bun. Um, but she she was my inspiration. Like between my dad, watching my dad and his suits, like I'm like, okay, that's what I want to be. Mm -hmm. And then with her, it's like, that's what I want to do. I want to make that. Yeah. I mean, I make men's clothes, but I have mostly women client, female clients. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she was just that. She was that light for me. She was that. And I would watch like I Love Lucy and mm -hmm. shows like that, and I would see my mom and in those shows, yeah. like she could wear that. And I would actually mimic some of oh. some of the stuff and try to make it for her. It didn't turn out all that great. In the no, beginning. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but um it worked out. Yeah. It worked out. Yeah, worked I out. love I love your relationship with your mother. Oh, I've that's gotten my a couple glimpses of that. That's my best dude. Um when we were with my mom in yes. LA, yes. you kept saying that and I could I felt it. Yeah, I felt for sure. that there was a similarity between that, the for power sure. of a very strong women in our lives. Oh, one hundred percent. I am just so curious because you could do anything and have. What is your ultimate goal for your brand, for like your legacy? Like, where do you see yourself going from here? I would love to do a, a bridal boutique. Really? Yes, I would love to do one in every major city in the in the country. Yeah. And then um, I'm obsessed with Paris, so at least one in Paris or something. Oh. But that is my that's my ultimate goal. I would love to do a bridal boutique for people to come and get custom gowns made. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like no shade to anyone, but I just feel like all, most brides look alike. Most mm -hmm. brides, yeah. they, there's this look, and they all have this look. And there's where's the personality? Where's where? I don't see the bride a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So that's my ultimate goal. I would love to do a bridal salon where people, it's almost kind of like the old school, and maybe I shouldn't say it on camera, what? but it's kind of like the old school, like the Lucia Boss. They would go, they could get a dress, mm -hmm. they could get their hair done, they mm -hmm. could get a facial, yeah. they could get their nails done. Yeah. And in some cases they couldn't get a massage. I would love to do that, that's like my ultimate, mm. ultimate goal. Have pictures of my mom and my influential clients yes. and people, you'll be up there. Oh, um, well, have, thank you. You know, Love just be. those kind of moments, that would be, that would be ultimate for me. Yeah. That would be ultimate for me, for at least in LA and New York and then in Paris. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, first of all, I, I think that this is just a dream manifested, 100%. waiting to happen. 100%. And the other thing that I, I do want my audience to know and understand is it's also your diversity of you can dress anyone, mm. any race, any age, any size, like you always bring out that special it factor in 
every single person. And it's mm. the stamp that really makes you stand out. Oh, wow. Um, and also it's your, it's your work ethic and your spirit. It's a quality that people can count on. And wow. I appreciate that so much about you as oh, a wow. designer, as a creator. Wow, thank you. Please tell my audience where they can find, follow you, see your looks, all the things. <laughs> Um, mostly everything is all in, um, Instagram at the time, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but Sir Algernon, S-I-R-A-L-G-E-R-N-O-N. Mm -hmm. Um, also on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not on X. I'm not on <laughs> yeah. X, whatever yeah, we're, it is. we're like X'd out on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then hopefully you can find me on the new comeback come back with Erica. Well, Kyle. yes. Well, like, they're they're listening and watching yeah, now. So yes. that's that's the vibe. Like, find me here. Like, do, do you all see? All the time. All the time. See? But no, honestly, Sir Algernon everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, Algernon Johnson, Sir Algernon, I want to thank you for spending a little bit of time with us on of Comeback course. with Erica Cobb and to my Comeback community. If you are listening in the car, make sure you go to my YouTube Watch the visuals because by the time that this particular episode drops, you will see my look for BravoCon and it is completely different than anything else that you have done for me before. It is yes. super exciting. Yes. I love, love supporting creators, especially ones like Sir Algernon because oh. they, it's like what you give is what you get. So what make sure you check out Sir Algernon on all social media and keep in touch with them. All right, that's it for Come Back with Erica Cobb. Check us out on comeback.tv or on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh.